Keep the camera, please. Hold it. Thanks. Look for it in the morning express. Take the press photographer. Columbia brings you another adventure of Casey, press photographer. Tonight and every Saturday at this time, Columbia invites you to follow Casey on his exciting assignment and to meet the strangely assorted people who pass in swift moving parade before the shutters of his camera. Tonight, the clue in the clouds. In the quiet evening air, there suddenly comes a whirring of wings. It's a helicopter, apparently out of control. Like a giant bird, it flaps crazily about for a few minutes and then heads out to sea. What is it? It looks like a bird. It's a helicopter. It's a wild plane. It's out of control. It may fall. Let it clear the street. <laughs> Okay, hold it. Thanks. 
Well, that's one you won't have to look for in his spread. Now, Miss Grace, what other interests did Mr. Hampton have? Business interests? Anything at all. Well, he had a little commercial movie studio, the Aristocrat Film Company. But that was closed up for six months. Oh, uh-huh. where's that? At 292 Former Street. They made short commercial reels and trailers. But it was only sort of hobby with Mr. Hampton. Never made any money. Well, what do you know of Mr. Hampton's family and Mrs. Hampton? She was alone when she married John. Mrs. Mr. Hampton. She had no living relative. And he just had an uncle. A Robert K. Hampton. Huh, an uncle, eh? Where's he? Well, he lived somewhere on an island in the Celebes Sea. Now held by the Japanese, I understand. He was sort of black sheep. Mr. Hampton hadn't heard from him for many years. Assumed he was dead or a prisoner until... Until? Um, well, maybe I couldn't tell you this. But shortly before his death, a letter came from Australia. I didn't open it, but when Mr. Hampton read it, he seemed terribly upset. Then he told me it was from his uncle. Uh, do you have that letter now? No, I... Why, it seems to have disappeared. Uh, and this was just before his death? Yes, he, he may have had it in his pocket. Miss Gray, this uncle, was he by any chance mentioned in Mr. Hampton's will? Yes, everything. All his money, the business, the building, everything. Oh, Mr. Casey, this is all a terrible nightmare. I can't believe that he's gone. I don't know where to turn. Oh, Miss Gray, it's all right. You mustn't take down. <laughs> you may do rest of it. How do you know? You'll feel better. I'm... I'm all right. I'm sorry. You just excuse me so long. I'll be right back. Well, certainly, Miss Gray. I'm sorry we upset you. Thank you. I'll be all right. Casey, you know something? Huh? What? A clue. He was in love with her boy. You think so? Mm-hmm. Why? Never mind. Just take a woman's room for it. What's the matter, young woman? Oh, nothing. That is, you gave me a start. Why should I frighten you? Well, you... Well, you look like... And if I may ask, who are you? What are you doing here? I'm just a reporter. Who is this young lady? I'm a reporter, too. What are reporters doing here? If you'll pardon me, sir... Who are you? My name is Robert K. Hampton. I'm John Hampton's uncle. So you think this uncle had something to do with Hampton's death, huh? Well, look, a guy named the Black Sheep Uncle is beneficiary in his will and suddenly gets a a letter. From her report, she's very upset by it. And the next day, packs himself and his wife off in a plane for a double suicide. Lieutenant Logan pronounced it an accident. Yeah, well, it doesn't add up to me. His uncle ties in somehow. Come on, Ann, I got a speak. Let's get out in the air. The nice slow plane there is a blue note, I have no doubt. <laughs> Yes, mastermind. Tell us. 
Quote, he who tries to fool his wife ends up playing the fool himself. Unquote. You better stick to your book, Pepper, but leave the amateur detective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Himself. Unquote. You better stick to your book, Ethelbert. Leave the amateur detective to Yeah, and you know, Ethelbert, I wouldn't waste my time on five little peppers either. It's way over your head. Well, I... Uh, well, uh, to tell the truth, I'm having a tough time waiting through it. You got any ideas? Well, as Gibbons decline and fall of the Roman Empire... They got that in a book already? Sure. Well, it just declined and fell last September. <laughs> Hey, look, Annie, you tell him. I'm going over and talk to her. Hiya, KZ. Hi, Annie. Ooh, you look worried, man. Then you got an old tune handy. It's up there. Something for me to play by. Sure, sure. Quite tired of it. Me and my shadow. Oh, yeah. Me and my shadow. Yep. You know that other self always under your feet? Other self, huh? Yep. You got another self. Now, one day you have to stay here and work on the express. Yeah. The other wants to fly away. Oh, dear, I'm up in the woods somewhere. Penny. <laughs> You got an uncle? No, I got an uncle. Well, if you knew he was coming to see you, would you want to fly away? Well, I'd be tempted. Yeah, why? Because it was me that he was bringing his eight kids along to live off of me. <laughs> yeah, but the thought wouldn't make you want to kill yourself, would it? No. Gee, see, why you got to be so dramatic? Of course not. Tell me, Danny. What makes guys want to get away? Oh, they usually... Fly away from one and go right to another, leaving all the world in good behind them. That's kind of costly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dames are costly. Now, for me now, I try to get the dames to fly away and leave my worldly goods to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, what? 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 I say, you'd say a brother better if you could get the dames to fly away and leave the worldly goods to you. Right. I think you got something there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Five little peppers and how they grew has got me puzzled. Uh-huh. I'm in the fourth chapter already and they ain't even started to spade the ground up. <laughs> hey, come on, Ann. I suddenly got a hunch. Hey, where are we going? Oh, but tomorrow we're going back and have another look at Uncle Robert K. Hampton. <laughs> Come in now. Thank you. This is Mr. Robert K. Hampton. Miss Williams, Mr. Case. Yes, we met before briefly. How do you do? Well, the young ladies were so startled yesterday when she first saw me. I'm sorry, Mr. Hampton. It was just that she looked so much. I know, like... I know. You were struck by my resemblance to my nephew. Uh, yes. Well, I don't blame you. You know, I never realized how much he got to look like me until I arrived and saw his picture here. Yes, it is a striking resemblance, sir. Your hair is gray instead of brown. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he had a mustache. Yeah, but anyone would take you for brothers otherwise. I think you're quite different. Well, after all, there were only seven years difference in our ages. I was just a kid when my brother's son, John, was born. Yeah, we were very sorry about what happened to your nephew, Mr. Hampton. These things are always kind of tough to take. Yes, they are. But, of course, it wasn't entirely unexpected. You know, I thought John would probably come to some violent end. My age, even as a kid, was always keyed up. Couldn't relax. He should have taken things easier. Now look at me. I spent my youth bumming around the world. Never made much, but I had fun and got along. Then I found a spot where life was pleasant, and I settled down. Where was that? Zurang Island, near Borneo. Paradise, simply paradise. That is, until the Japs came along. Then I somehow managed to get out. Just by the skin of my teeth, too. Hmm, sorry. Yes. 
Now, well, here I am. You see, everything worked out pretty well. Yes, thanks to John Hanson, who spent his whole life... Miss Drake, you were saying... I... I'm sorry. Uh, if you mind if I take some pictures, Mr. Hampton, my paper wants to run a feature on you and your nephew. You know, your, your vastly different lives and activities, you know, the... The Hampton who traveled the earth and the Hampton who stayed at home. That's rather a good idea, Mr. Casey. Uh, where would you like me to <clears throat> sign this picture of John? No, no. Hey. Sorry. Yes, yes, I would if you don't mind. Let's let's try behind the desk there. All right. <clears throat> How's this? Uh, you'll pardon me, Mr. Hampton, but your your hair's a little must. You know, with such striking gray hair as you have, you... You ought to have it looking its best. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll... Uh, no, 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 don't move. Miss Williams will arrange it. Oh, all right. Uh, have you got a call, ma'am? Uh-huh. There's one right here in my bag. Now, just a second. There you are. Thank you. Fine, that's it. Now, Mr. Hampton, hold it. Want another? I'm sure that one picture should be enough. Miss Gray, if you please. Well, we'll take one more. Just one more for good luck. Now, hold that just as you are, right there. Thank you. Oh, but I'm afraid I'm in that one, too. Your camera was pointed right at me. Well, we'll see when they're developed. Uh, thank you both very much. Thank you. You know, Mr. Casey, uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, somewhat of a camera fan myself. Now that's so? Yes, taking pictures all my life. I have some beautiful shots of Chirang Island. I was wondering if, uh, if perhaps you couldn't break them along with the feature on my nephew and me. Not that I would want to monopolize the story, of course, no. But uh, I only thought it, uh, well, it might set off the differences in us. Mm. Uh, more dramatically, you know, give it a little added color. Yeah, sure, sure, that might be an angle. Let's see the pictures. Mm. Yes, well, I have a few small ones in my wallet here. Uh-huh. The Japs got most of my stuff, of course. Oh, yes, I can imagine. Let me see now. This is a nice shot. Mount Tonamau. Ah, uh. And look at this, Anne. Mm, beautiful. And this is a view of my uh, backyard, so to speak. So looking north. Is that you and Hammett? Yes, that's me. I used a self-timer. Set it and then ran and got into the picture. Used a flexo camera with f 35 lens at 120th of a second. Mm, it's not bad. What's this one? <laughs> so that's me again. Same trick. Uh, that was taken from the front porch. Looking south? Yes. Mm, that's lovely country. Looks almost like a stage setting. I think perhaps we're boring these people, Mr. Hampton. Yes, sir. I'm afraid we are. No, no, really, not at all. I'd like to use these pictures. They're exceptional shots. Mm -hmm. And pictures always dress up a feature. Well, all right. But you will be careful to return them to me, won't you? They're the only prints I have, and I treasure them beyond words. Don't worry, I'll treat them with kid gloves. Thank you, Mr. Casey. Well, that's all right. Now, I think we'd better be pushing off. Time and deadlines wait for no man. And no woman either. We're happy to meet you, Mr. Hatton, and we hope you like it here. I think I shall. Uh, take good care of the pictures. All right. Look for them in the morning express. Bye, and thank you. Goodbye. I don't like that young man. He's too clever. Now, darling, take it easy. After all, he's only a newspaper photographer. Are you sure this article on you is a good idea? Of course. We'll need it. Why do you think I went to all that work to get those pictures? The public must be convinced, too. Now, don't worry, my dear. There'll be no slip-up. There better hadn't be. Not after 11 years of planning and waiting. Now that those people have the pictures, I'll set fire to the evidence. You mean burn the negatives? There are little fires and big fires. Oh, you mean... Yes. Tomorrow night, a nice big fire. Let's see that negative here. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. That I call a nice layout. Yeah. Pictures look pretty good, huh? Eh? Mm-hmm. My article's all right, too. Mm-hmm. You know, someday I'm going to teach you how to read. Oh, yeah. The views of Churang Island came out really bright and clear, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Hey, Anne, look at this. What? Do you notice anything strange about those two shots taken in Hampton's front and backyard? 
No. Well, I do. Look. Look at this bank of clouds here. Uh-huh. It looks sort of like a face, doesn't it? Oh, sure. It looks like my Aunt Sophie. Now, quit clowning. Look at it close. I'm looking. Well, now, that's supposed to be a view looking north. That's right. Well, here's exactly the same formation in the view looking south. Well, that's queer. Queer. It's a physical impossibility. There haven't been two cloud formations exactly alike since the first day of creation. With... Then these things were faked. Yeah, they were beautifully faked. You know, I thought Hampton froze a little when you made that crack. What crack? About those pictures looking almost like a stage set. No, Annie, Hampton gave us these pictures for the paper for a reason. He wants everyone to see them. He wants everyone to think that he, that he has lived all these years miles away from here. And that he arrived here just in time to have a pot of gold fall into his lap. Oh, that's a little too mean, isn't it? Yeah, these pictures are all he's got to prove he wasn't here all the time. Well, if he was here, how do we know he didn't murder John Hampton? He had the motive, all right. The will did him everything. Yeah, and right under John Hampton's feet. Hey, who said something like that? Mm. Ernie. That's right, me and my shadow. Annie, I think I got it. Quick, let me look at your comb. Well, sure, Casey. But here, but what on earth is that? Wait a minute. Here, look at this. A hair. A lone gray hair. I gotta take this down to Logan and have him run some tests on it. I'll see you back here in about an hour. Well, here are your pictures of Hampton, the ones we didn't print. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to check on them. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. Look, Bert. This one of Hampton with Miss Gray in the background. You see this? Yeah. And what a sugar-coated look she's got on her foot. Yeah, let me see. And don't she look like a mother whose son has just been made president of his class or something? She in love with this guy? Of course not. You sure am? Well, she just met him. Uh-huh. You swore she was in love with her boss. That's right. And a woman like that couldn't be in love with two men. Why not? Because she's the perfect one-man woman type. Uh-huh. That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> I got a theory on this case, and this just about puts a pin on it. Come on. Hey, where are we going? We got a little job of breaking and entering to do. We're going to crash the deserted studio of the Aristocrat Film Company. Yeah. 
You didn't want anyone to find out where you made those phony pictures, did you? No, and I don't want you to tell them. And you won't if you and your charming lady friends should get trapped here and cremate them. There's rather an ugly name for that. Murder. A murder is not a murder until it's proven so. But before I kill you, I want you to tell me something. Yes, I expected that. Most murderers are very cautious to know where they're... Where they slipped up. All right, I'll tell you, Mr. John Hampton. Oh. You guessed that, too. Of course. You're not Robert K. Hampton. There never was any Robert K. Hampton. You never fled from the Japs on Churang Island. You picked that place because it would be impossible to take your story. This whole thing was arranged between you and Miss Matilda Gray. You planned this for years and been in love with her for years. Go on. You drew your will to a fictitious uncle and probably faked up enough credentials so that you could appear to be that uncle. And then when the time came, all you had to do was drug your wife, put her in a helicopter. Well, it was just enough fuel to get over the ocean and set the controls and let her go. Don't you think the plan was clever? Fiendishly clever. And it was clever of you to spend ten years working out your disguise. Most criminals try to change their identity by putting on a disguise. You achieved a change by picking one off. One you had worn for ten years. You shaved your mustache, bleached the dye out of your hair, and then came down here and took a few pictures of yourself in a tropical setting. Then, the very next day, you turned up as the long-lost uncle, inheriting all your own money, and in a position to marry Miss Matilda Gray. I fooled everyone but you, Mr. Casey. Tell me, why did you suspect me? Well, being a photographer, maybe I looked too closely at your pictures. And you made the mistake of using the same sky in all of them. Oh, Clever of you to notice it. Well, you slipped up on one other little thing, too. So, here, remember when I combed it for you, Mr. Ashton? Yes, under the police microscope, a strand of your hair still showed traces of brown dye. It's those little things, Mr. Ashton. Perhaps. And then, of course, you you should never have let me get a picture of Matilda Gray off guard. For although she treated you badly and seemed to hate you, her love showed up in the face as plainly as though it were written there. Very interesting. And as Anne told me, a woman like Matilda Gray couldn't love two men. It turned out she didn't. Both men were you. Quite right. Now, before you have a chance to turn this story over to the police, I'm afraid I shall have to shoot you both. I, uh, wonder if you'd mind shooting me first. The sight of blood, you You can't afford a joke, Miss Williams. Oh, no. I, I don't want to be too near. May I stand over there by those ropes? Wherever you wish. Thank you. Good girl, Annie. Good girl, boy. That dude is okay. Oh, I got his gun. Wow, oh, that drop shot be easy. Easy breathing? Yeah. Well, he won't know it for an hour or so. Gee, kid, nice going. Well, darling, you told me not to pull that knot and... Annie, Annie, this was an inspiration. I could just about kiss you. Oh, so I've got to save your life to deserve one stingy little kiss. <laughs>
Casey Plus Photographer is directed by Albert Ward and produced for Columbia by John Deak. Tonight's story was written by Charles Holden. <laughs> week at the same time for another swift-moving story of Casey, press photographer. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.